Greetings, Inquisitor. Welcome to week 14 in the rise of Obtisio. I started this account 1st of January, used the Hyperdrive bundle, and I'm doing account updates every week so newer players can follow along and learn uh, how to build their own account to effectively compete in the new Grand Arena system. This week, we didn't get a whole lot of progress. Let's take a look and see what happened in the account. Our target is to relic that Echo in week 16, so two more weeks. We don't even have a single piece locked in on him yet. We do manage to get the uh, upgrade on Anakin here. We're farming him off of both of the hard nodes that he comes off of uh, when we can, so we're developing him uh, pretty quickly. We'll get him up and running. Put another star on Django Fett. We've got him marked, and on uh, when it's the quest objective for the day is hard nodes. We farm Django. we got to get the Houndstooth someday, so we work on him a bit here and there. Ezra Bridger goes to seven stars. We've been picking him up out of the Fleet Arena store when we have extra currency. Shakti gets the sixth star, so we're on the home stretch with her. She's on a very uh, challenging gear tier. Early in the game, you don't have too many of these Kairos. And she needs two sets of Kairos uh, for this gear tier. So we're going to go ahead and lock in one set of Kairos and the rest of the gear uh, onto Shock T. And we're going to just look to uh, be able to continue her uh, gear improvements over the course of the next few weeks. In ships, we got another star on the BTLB. Uh, we don't really need that ship right now, but we're going to need it for some day. And I found that farming these pilotless ships later on is pretty annoying. So I want to just go ahead and get them into the account right from the start. Uh, Anakin's ship is going up to five stars. Similarly, uh, we don't really have a spot for Anakin where he's the star of the fleet, but he, it's just one of the best ships in the game. No excuse not to build it early on. It is another long farm. So, you know, if we're going to spend like five or six months farming a ship, let's get it out of the way right here at first. In, uh, in terms of our Geo Fleet, we're still working on them. We haven't gotten the skills maxed out yet. We have Hyena Bomber here. We're taking that to level 85. Still only four stars on this ship. Still got a ways to go on that. We've been using the Geos under Home 1, and we've been playing the other fleet under Endurance. Home 1 is in a position now where we can max out this passive. So we're going to go ahead and spend a bunch of our uh, prestige that we've got saved up. And we're going to make this uh, home one just a step better uh, for Fleet Arena so that we can hopefully continue pressing our progress or for, um, for putting it on defense in Grand Arenas, uh, however you want to look at it. We need two good capital ships. We've kind of got the Endurance and home one both going now. In terms of the Geos themselves, each week when we get these ship Omega materials, I'm trying to take a look and see what the very best application of that is, specifically with the Geos. That skill on Spy makes him hit quite a bit harder, but we still don't have this passive on Grudge for Sunfac, so we're going to go ahead and invest our materials over there. We're still working on that 7th star for Sunfac. Um, I'm farming him a little bit here and there, buying him out of the shops. And uh, it's slow going, but we'll get him there. Talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. So in week 14, we're up to 1.6 million GP. Like I said, not a whole lot of progress, 20,000 this week. Still five relics, six Zetas, uh, one Omicron and Qui-Gon Jinn. In the squad arena, we've still got EP, Vader, Crew, and a couple Geos, and we're top 50, top 100, you know, not working very hard to try to place over there, so... I could probably get top 50 if uh, if I tried. In Fleet Arena, we've got the um, we've got the fleet with the silencer, the fives and bigs in top 10 with the endurance. We've also got the geos now to a point where they're about equally good under home one. So I'm trading off between them depending on which. Uh, opponent I'm facing. There's a couple fleets that I beat easier with the silencer combo. There's a couple fleets that I beat easier with the uh, geos. But uh, overall, it's become harder for me to get into the top five. 
And uh, I get to play a couple matches real quick at lunch, and that's it. So if I don't get uh, a win there or two, then uh, I don't place. So we've had a couple of placements that have been even below top 10 the last week, and uh, we need to address that. The project is still to Relic Echo in week 16. The energy plan, the same thing, farming all these ships, Hyena Vulture, BTLB Y-Wing, um, then we've got Dark Trooper, Piet, Resistance Hero, Finn, and Jedi Knight, Anakin that we're working on. In Fleet, we're working on Anakin's ETA, Sunfac, Shock T, and then Gear 13 materials. Cantina, uh, we're doing some of the Arc Trooper, some of Moff Gideon. We're trying to get signal data and build them at the same time. And then Mod Energy, Speed and Defense, same refresh strategy, and the same shot plan that I've had for several weeks now. It's not really changing. In the cantina, I'm splitting it between Cassian's U-Wing and feeding the shard shop. Um, I do want to build that Cassian's U-Wing. It takes, it takes a lot of investment up front um, to get that thing all the way to seven stars. Uh, because I'm hyperdrive, I already have the characters to unlock it, so that part of it's easy. If you're free to play and you didn't do hyperdrive, then you also have to get the characters up and running in order to unlock the ship to seven stars to take advantage of that. But it is the most efficient way to convert Cantina currency. And I love this as a reinforcement. I think it's uh, one of the best reinforcements in the game. I've got it on both my other accounts, and I feel like getting it into this third account makes sense. In the guild store, we're buying Carbantes, Ewoks, First Order, just working on all that stuff uh, as we get the currency. Squad Arena, um, we're buying gear, feeding to the shard shop, buying prestige now at least three or four times a week. Uh, so that's going on. In Fleet, we're getting Razor Crest for someday, Grievous, Sunfax ship, and then other stuff that I see in there. Like that Ezra, I was able to build him out of the Fleet store without too much problem. Guild Events, uh, saving that for Malevolence and save and get one for gas. Shark Shop, Purples and Gear 13s. So here's a conversation that I've had with a lot of people. Hey, DL, I need some advice. What should I work on next? And uh, I always tell people, look, are you getting top five in Fleet Arena? And when they say nope, then uh, yeah, I guess you're working on pilots. So if that's the case, then if I'm saying that I might be getting pushed out of the top five, uh, then I need to do better in Fleet. And what I've identified is that Sunfac dies too quickly in these battles, so with the opening volley from uh, Spy and Soldier and their own Sunfac when I'm fighting against Geos, I don't mind if Sunfac dies, but he can't die in the first volley. You know, he can't die to uh, a few shots from other Geos and then, you know, Spy gets to target somebody else to kill. So I don't have a Hound's Tooth, um, and I don't really have the hyena bomber in a, in a position where that could be another tank for me. So I'm really stuck with uh, not having a good enough tank. Uh, I could put Biggs in there, but without a way to guarantee a target lock, then Biggs is uh, less desirable as well because he doesn't get taunt until a target lock shows up. So it's really a conundrum of having a good enough tank to keep a couple of the Geos alive and then... Uh, you know, they, they do plenty of damage, but uh, but my problem right now is that the other fleets are, are killing them. So I think Sunfac is the key, and I've not uh, experienced the difference firsthand of how much tougher Sunfac is um, at Relic level, but I know when I fight against fleets, uh, on the Lokwater account, for example, when I fight a fleet that has a Relic Sunfac, it is a completely different battle than a gear 12 sun fact for example so i know from the uh sending side that uh that, that it really does make a difference in how that fleet plays out so i feel like getting sun fact to relic would be the the logical next step for the fleet um and what i'm looking at right now shock T's on a tough gear tier i can probably break it break her through that but she's got a couple more tough gear tiers coming up um, the Arc Trooper isn't at seven stars yet, so I don't, um, I, I, he's not going to be ready to relic. 
So I think after Echo is done, I won't have another character at gear 12 anyway. So I think what I'll do, while I'm still working on Shakti and Arc Trooper and getting them ready, I'll take a break from that and, and go back and relic the Sunfac. And uh, that'll give me a little data and I'll be able to share with you all and I'll be able to tell you how big of a difference it made to go to Relic Sunfac. Um, I've still got Sunfac's ship at six stars. It's slower to build. We all know it's slower to build. But if Relic level six stars is already good enough, then that makes a huge difference uh, for how we might build the Geo Fleet in the future. We might look for Sunfac. Um, having Spy as a Relic is really good, but, but maybe we, we would Relic Sunfac first or instead of spy um, to have a little more punch there if we're not going to farm the hound's tooth so just some things i want to experiment with but uh, it's looking like we're going to take a quick pause on the clones throw a relic on sunfac and see what that does for fleet um, if that doesn't work then the other thing that that you can do especially in early um, fleet arena the speed of your capital ship is important. And for example, if I'm fighting against another Geo fleet and they have Tarkin and their Tarkin goes first, uh, I could very easily get target locked on my characters and I miss my first round of big damage. And, and then I can't target lock him back um, and his characters are already going. So, so uh, in that scenario, if I could just go ahead of the opposing Tarkin, uh, for example, with Home 1, you can do the mass assist and, and potentially burn down one of their ships uh, in one volley. Um, and and if, it's, if they're first round, they only have two ships instead of three, then you've got a really good chance of winning that battle. So if the, if the Sunfact trick doesn't work, then we have to Relic uh, uh, Admiral for a capital ship. So the two I'm working with, Mace Windu, of course, is in the Endurance, and Akbar is in the Home 1. Mace is pretty respectable after the rework. He's a relic requirement for Kenobi someday. Um, I think everybody's going to go for Kenobi at some point, so it wouldn't be a wasted relic. Gives me another strong Jedi to put somewhere. He can fit into the Padme team. There's just tons of stuff that he can do, so Mace would be a good, a good choice. Akbar as a character has traditionally not been a good choice, but I am intrigued by his Omicron, and I feel like in a team built the right way, uh, Akbar with an Omicron, um, I think could be a pretty dangerous thing. Um, maybe pair him up with Leia also. It's a couple Omicrons that we'd have to give away to experiment, but, uh, but I'm tempted to put an Omicron onto... Um, to build Akbar to Relic, put an Omicron on him, and then try some experiments with Mon Mothma, because if you put Mon Mothma in that team, all of her basic skills that get triggered are not attacks, which should trigger two other characters to go. And, and I feel like it could be this interesting combination just with the, with the Omicron on um, Akbar. So I kind of want to try that out. So maybe Akbar will be my choice if I have to do this. And then we'll just play around with it and see if the Omicron's any good. Uh, I've got 11 materials for my next Omicron. And of course we know Zamwasel is a fantastic Omicron. Probably the second best for uh, GAC. But I'd be willing to, well, I guess Wampa's probably one of the top ones now. Probably the number one. But uh, for lower players who aren't going to have a Wampa sitting around ready to go, then, um, you know, Zam and, and, and uh, Qui-Gon really look like the premium uh, Omicrons. But, uh, but maybe this Akbar has more potential than we think, so we'll take a look at that. Uh, that's going to wrap up the account's progress this week. And, uh, you know, there, there does come a time when uh you know building your characters and stuff doesn't look too exciting and it doesn't feel like you get much progress so uh you know the accounts in one of those weeks we we didn't even get a single piece locked down on our relic target so um you'll have those weeks the gear's still coming in and i still feel like we'll hit that relic target on time uh two weeks out all right thank you all for watching subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already it helps you know when more videos like this are available uh, 
join us over on Discord. We got a great Discord community. I advertise that all the time, but uh, but come on over. And uh, if you want to become a Patreon subscriber, that gets you some benefits over in the Discord um, for the Lokwater channel. And uh, I, I'm pretty helpful with the Patreon, so yeah, get over there. There's a special channel for the Patreon group. And you can get access to uh, information and advice uh, pretty quickly from me or from other Patreons who are pretty clever. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next Holocron.